Hey there, Shuby Doodlers. Um, I am starting to work on the cover of my trilogy called Generation Moon. When I started, <laughs> I didn't know what it was going to look like. You can see all this in a previous video. Eventually, I came up with these kind of characters and drew this little picture and kind of worked on that. And you can see since I've been working on it, so she's sort of slightly changed and he's slightly changed. His forehead is not quite so high. Um, and when I started it, the whole thing was first kid on the moon. That's That was my inspiration. And now the trilogy in the first book is called Generation Moon. Uh, so, uh, so, so this is changing and I don't want the space thing in the back. I don't want the rockets there because the first book is not actually going anywhere near the moon or space or anything. It's kind of leading up to it. And I want these two in flight jackets rather than in these um, SpaceX Dragon Crew um, uniforms. So this is where I'm starting. And it took me a while. I did quite a bit of drawing to get this, to get them kind of standing next to each other. I know I did a lot of drawings, so there's a whole lot of other drawings somewhere. Getting the two characters next to each other and positioned like that. So I've done a fair bit of work on that. So what I've done is with my light box, um, I've traced through, but I'm putting them into flight jackets now. And this is now my first flight jacket uh, sketch. And I'm just gonna work from here really. And I probably don't need the light box I can probably do all this with a just layout pad so this is see right of Brighton um, I think you can get this abroad it's probably cheaper to get other layout paper but if you live in the UK see white are really good I'm, I'm not sponsored by them <laughs> I get all my stuff from them uh, they're just extremely good value and good quality so for one thing you can see his his hair is not quite as big as it was and so I'm just going to kind of work out a square and if you go and look at my previous videos then the previous video on this then you'll it'll make more sense and these need to be a bit more round and then his he's going to be more down there and they, that kind of comes into there and then we want his ears more there and then the hair is going up like that into there and across like that. That's a bit better. That's kind of looking more like I imagined him to be. And here again, we had a square. Oh, I had a square. Oh yeah, no, no. Yeah, so it needs to be a square like that and quarter those and then the fringe comes into there that will come down and then this wants to come in a little bit like that and then from that corner this wants to come down like that and if that's the center line then I need to move the eye a little bit so it's sort of coming out that way uh, like that and then she'll have a smile just about there she's looking a little bit wild I'm gonna to have to work on that face and then we want to get these flight jackets uh, I have one of these <laughs> So I think, in fact, I'm going to do a bit of posing. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified every time I upload new videos to help you improve your creative skills. OK, so uh, Mrs. Rayner has been very kindly <laughs> videoing me in my um, in my jacket. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of that. So I'm just trying to think, how do we make this a bit more sort of like that it needs to be really kind of chunky these are really chunky jackets so we want that to be out there and we want a seam down the middle like that and we're just going to see a little bit of arm going in there and then we want 
that coming out there and then quite out and around and then we've got the sleepy bit there and we want to have the neck very much sort of going like like that <laughs> I'm going to zoom in to get that the feel for that collar because it's a very distinct kind of collar you have in there and I need to kind of twist her face around a little bit so I'm going to make that more and just sort of erase that a little bit not get rid of it all but I'm going to move that to there and make that a bit more that way I think and then this will be more sort of coming down there so that the eyes will be going more kind of that way and sort of want them looking at us because I said before she's described as being looking a bit like a cat <laughs> and so maybe have that coming in about there I think and then oh no we want that to be coming slightly out that way so slightly changing there let's get that from a different angle like that okay <laughs> it's more like that so we want his so we'll see that sort of coming around like that coming down there coming down there a little bit there and we'll see kind of a half and we want this so I might have to arrange them a little bit differently I think so this is going to come up that's like chunky sleeves and then that's going to be kind of going in there and then that will be Kind of more that way so I think I've got to lean them in together a bit more um, and that would be coming down there good so now I can use this one and I don't know whether to have them looking at each other but I, I think they should be looking out really at you <laughs> the reader or the purchaser so what do you think Again here, I think I'm just going to move that line over to there a little bit so that his mouth would be a bit over there and his eye will be more over there. And then his ear. You probably won't see the ear on that side. bring that up there so it's, it's constantly adjusting and I know some people think oh that's really is cheating <laughs> using all this the tracing but um, but it really isn't if you watch previous videos you can see I've spent a lot of effort creating these characters and they're my characters I know them and and it's just getting them into the right positions and so I've done all the drawing I've done all the previous drawing and everything for the characters and this is just kind of getting them in the right pose which would be great if I had you know two young people who look sort of like this and then I could just get them and say hey could you just um, <laughs> pose but I don't I have to kind of extrapolate it from myself so this really wants to sort of come like that and then that's going to kind of disappear off underneath there and then we got this sort of taped up kind of edge and that's going to be there like that and then that will come over to there so that this then comes quite like that uh, make that a bit more a bit rounder I think like that so that's actually going 
underneath there and then we want that we're going to have a little badge there uh, and we'll see that one there and we'll move her a bit closer in and then we'll have her coming around there oh like that and then that's her fringe if you watched the previous video you know i had sort of terrible problems <laughs> with the eyes because uh, she's Chinese, but I don't want them. I don't want to have sort of stereotypical cartoon Chinese eyes. I'm still not quite happy with her eyes yet. I don't think. Uh, so we can have the color coming around there, sort of ribbing on there on the on the sleeve, and then that's sort of coming under there. And we got that, and then we'll have the ribbing coming in there we'll see a bit of the badge so she's leaning up against him there and uh, they're big buddies <laughs> it's um it's it's really tricky because uh, you know i think in a way it's kind of a book for boys but i don't think it is it's a book for i want it to be a book for boys and and girls who are going to be excited by the kind of space Artemis space missions and things like that and the idea of going to the moon and there are girls like that <laughs> so these two are just big buddies and they're kind of oh, 11 12 years old which is a sort of age where romance can start to spring <laughs> but but in writing it, it's kind of really tricky to not allow that to creep in. There's definitely friendship there. Yeah, no, I think maybe the eyes need to come down. So from that, I think I've got the pose right. And I can start working that a bit more. So this is a middle grade book, which is sort of for eight to 12 year olds is sort of what middle grade reckons to be. And I know that 12 year old girls in particular are sort of <laughs> definitely starting to get interested in boys and love and romance starting to get into that kind of thing boys are this is where they're really going away from it when you go to um, you know early years and the sort of five year olds and everything they're all madly in love with each other at that at that stage Oh, that's what's got yeah that needs to come up to the ear doesn't it so i think in fact his head needs to move slightly so so um you know and if you go into a, a classroom with five-year-olds they're all tell you who's going to marry who and who loves who <laughs> and uh and they're very sweet but but when it comes to boys you know about 10 years old and on a bit uh, i think that's a bit high then they're starting to go, girls, you know, except that's sort of girls in in general. But it's quite easy for a 10 year old boy to be best friends with a girl. Might have to keep secret about it. <laughs> it depends how brave and plucky they are, because I know the other boys will start going yeah, your girlfriend. <laughs> and you have to be quite a a brave young man to say ah shut up <laughs> she's just my friend and to stay a friend and not to uh, not to give in to those kind of pressures and it doesn't have to be romance it's just you know what i don't know what it, what is it that makes you <laughs> become friends with somebody and it's sort of shared interest and passions and it's just something isn't it that you're just kind of similar it's um it's just a little detail but it's sort of this seam down the um edge of the sleeve here which seems to sort of pucker right up and it just sort of adds that little textural detail to the thing that makes it a proper ma1 jacket um, in case you're desperate and you think, whoa, that's such a cool jacket, uh, I will put an Amazon link <laughs> down below. 
as you might think. Oh, I've always wanted a jacket like that. Mm, mm, mm. You fancied yourself to be a an astronaut in the in the past. <laughs> and when I'm uh, doing this um, launch, so she wants to be slightly shorter, so I'm going to make do her about that. When I'm going, I'm launching. See, launch? How is the, you know? It's all getting all the space sort of terminology in there so i'm launching this as a kickstarter crowdfunding project um probably i think the first of february is what i have planned at the moment and so one of the reward levels on that there will be badges uh, <laughs> so that if you have the jacket you can sew on your badges <laughs> and become a become a wannabe astronaut. Now I'm going to try moving those eyes just down a little bit like that. It's very hard to get her right. I think she's one of the most tricksiest characters <laughs> I've drawn in it. And so if we do that, like that. Well, tricksy for me, you know, she's not a tricksy cat. Well, she's a, hmm. No, she isn't, no. No, she's straight down the line as a character. <laughs> she tells you how it is, whether you want to hear it or not. <laughs> um, yeah, that kind of a person, you know. So, and then we want that kind of line in there. And then we're going to see the badge there, in there, and so we've got name badges in there as well. And we want to have a a badge that. Oh no, I'm going to put another badge on there. They have lots of mission badges. Mission badges are really important in space. <laughs> it's a thing. I never sort of write a, a write in there about you know why mission badges are important. It's to sort of build team unity and all that kind of stuff. Bring that there, and that's really all I'm going to need. And I want them to be looking. Uh, I think they need to be looking more out there like that. Yeah, I think we can do work with that with a piece of watercolour paper over the top. I'm going to turn out the overhead lights. That makes it difficult to see what's going on. If I don't get the <laughs> the eyeballs in quite the right position, then I can always shift them around in Photoshop later. And then I mustn't forget to put three little dots across the top. That's his kind of character identifier mark. And I'm going to start here. I'll have to look at my jacket again, actually, whether it's it's a seam or whether it's actually it might be a kind of a reinforced seam. So we got the space agency badge up there, and the, we got a Generation Moon badge there. And when I illustrate for publishers, they're always desperate. You know, as soon as the contract is signed and. They're all kind of, yeah, this is going to be great, you know. And then suddenly I get an email saying, oh, can we have the artwork for the cover? And I go, what? And then sometimes I haven't even finished writing the story. And they're wanting the cover artwork. And the reason is to start building a campaign around it. And that's really why I want to do this and get these two side by side as a kind of, it's not quite a logo, but it's a kind of... Um, I don't know what you call it, uh, a kind of an image, of a, a project image. So I'm just going to do that, like that. And then we want her hair. I think we do that. Um, I think I'm going to come and kind of do that. And then we'll have that coming in underneath there. And then this can come in quite tight. So they're kind of cartoony. I'm just going to put a little bit of curve in there, I think. 
So they're kind of cartoony, but then at the same time they're... I'm trying to make them kind of reasonably real. And then this will come there and down there. And I want them to be, you know, not photographic, <laughs> sort of hyper-realist. But, uh, but I want them to look sort of reasonably quickly drawn, not overdrawn, look reasonably loose. But there's something about doing artwork for covers that <laughs> always makes uh, illustrators sort of tighten up. It's like, oh, this is the important one. <laughs> You know, if you have a really loose style, it just all disappears straight out the window. Oh, I've got to do proper artwork, and, <laughs> and I'm just going to do like a hashtag on there, which is sort of one of their signs, and bring that in there as well. Oh, and then we want a that'll be her Generation Moon badge there. We want teeth on the zip coming down here, and then I'm starting to think about painting <laughs> next and quite how detailed the painting should be so she has a skirt on underneath here I'll bring that up to there so yeah and so yeah ready to paint see what happens and this is really quite a uh, heavy paper I think this is sea white watercolor paper it's really is it's like card so I'm not going to bother stretching it out but I am certainly going to use my hairdryer to make sure it's dry. And this is where I have the opportunity of doing something <laughs> interesting, like making him ginger haired. Um, I'm thinking about that. <laughs> I have been thinking. It doesn't say anything in the story. These are my Windsor and Newton half pan artist watercolors. You'll find links down below. Um, I don't think you can get this nice little tin anymore, though. I think they, I bought this for my mum in about 1984 or something. And she gave it to me. And I think all their tins are plastic now, which is a shame. Something. Something nice about these old tins. You might find old tins like this, you know, on sale on eBay or something like that, if you have a look. Antique art materials. <laughs> I don't know if there is such a thing. Right, I'm going to have a little bit of, I think that's Scarlet Lake or Vermilion, I can't remember. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified every time I upload new videos to help you improve your creative skills. So this is Naples Yellow, which is my standard go-to for skin tones. And I'm, I'm going to start like that. See, he does have these freckles there, which makes me think I might... I don't think I'm going to do it with this one, but I might have a go. I'll do another one with him with red hair, which should be quite interesting. See how that went. Well, I'll just work with this at the first and see how it goes. I've just always assumed she's got just sort of dark hair. The two of them do. And then she, I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of yellow in with that. Maybe a bit of yellow ochre. Just to give a slightly different texture and I forgot to leave these little shiny cheeks with him um, so we can do that there and a little bit of on the nose so this is the first time I've painted them in grayscale it's the first time I tried doing them in color so it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, we need a bit more Red in there, I think, a bit in the nose, around there. So there's the thing in the story with these jackets when they all go off on a school trip to uh, to a roller coaster park, and people start noticing them that they've got these jackets and things. And obviously, it's you know, it's sort of been mentioned somewhere in the press that somewhere in the country there is this space school thing, and there must have been some kind of publicity for it at some point 
um, but they're quite unaware of it, and they, it's just it's just what they do. <laughs> they they go to school and learn about space and <laughs> space exploration every day, and then they're all lined up in their uh, cool space jackets, <laughs> flight jackets, and people start going, "Oh, can we can we take selfies with you?" And they suddenly go, "Oh." oh are we famous? <laughs> uh, there we go. So I'm just going to put these bits of shade into the eyes because eyeballs aren't white. They're um, <clears throat> well, they're not white anyway. So I put a little bit of shade into his teeth as well, like that. I'm going to mix up a tiny bit of purpley blue and have a bit of, hmm, mix a bit of neutral tint in there as well. Neutral tint I find is just one of the most useful colours for sort of shade things. So we put a bit of shade in underneath her um, fringe and he'd have a little bit of shade in there and probably I'll just blending that in there so that it's not too obvious right I'll let that go maybe a little bit more there for the bottom lips there I'm just gonna want a little bit there oh um, a little bit of lips in there and I think she's going to want to have brown eyes so those are the pupils we've, oh, we've got there I, I'm reaching a point where I think I need to get one of those sort of arms that come over and have a <laughs> have a magnifying glass built in with a light you know <laughs> do you know what i mean so we got to do a bit of bit, a bit darker in there and i think he might have i'm not sure about this so they both got brown eyes that kind of makes it all kind of go a bit funny that so i'm not terribly happy with that <laughs> and then we're going to want lots of neutral tint in the hair so this is quite dark i'm mixing up um, and then I'm just going to sort of do that and then on the bottom of the fringe and then kind of flick up like that. I'm alternately sort of thinking of actually colouring in in a very flat kind of way on Photoshop, in which case I should have um, scanned this before I started painting, which would have been useful. It's too late now. <laughs> and let's do something like that so while it's wet I'm paint, painting wet on wet and just kind of dropping in stronger color but while because it's wet then it'll kind of flow into the color that's already there rather than here you can see that's more of a sharp edge there rather than letting it flow I'm not really happy with those eyes yeah I've got to do some work on that but this is kind of an early <laughs> first version I think when you're getting to know characters and first start painting them, you just have to, you know, it doesn't all just happen in the first first time. Very rarely do you just get it right first time. I think you just, it's, it's like a relationship. You're kind of getting to know them and sort of, you know, how and where to apply the brush. So now I'm going to need to put some blue in here with the neutral tint to get this sort of navy midnight blue I'm just going to paint the whole thing and try and try and do this section quickly like that so that I can then get a bit of to, to drop in shade so this is darker neutral tint that I'm dropping in here just to kind of add a bit of form sort of curvature like that yeah, that works, I think. And then we'll do the same over here. 
Maybe not to paint the badge, which is quite a different colour. I'll get some more neutral tint in there like that to hmm, drop in. So hopefully while it's wet it'll kind of work its way in and kind of soothe, um, smooth. Oh God. <laughs> uh, my brain's not working. Flow is probably what I'm trying to think of. It's sort of little snare its way into the thing. So, so you're getting it kind of lighter up here and darker down there. I think I added a bit too much in one go there. Well, now I'm messing it up a little completely, but then have a little bit of highlight there. Maybe that would work. We'll see at the end. Sometimes you get little things like that happen, and you go, "Oh, that's really nice." <laughs> and then we'll do the same underneath here, and that's going to be quite a bit darker there. And then the the ribbed part. Oh, I just forgot. I need to. I got two different screens. I got a screen in front of me, which is like helping me see that everything's on the page. And then I got my main screen. The one in front of me is very, very blue. So I mustn't look at that. And we want the the collar parts to be quite much darker. It being a different material, as it were. The ribbed parts is probably what I should mean. Add a lot more neutral tint in there just to make it look darker. Give it that sort of shade and form like that. Um, I think it's kind of working. Um, and then they got sweatshirts on underneath which we want to be a bit sort of a slightly different color blue i might as well paint hers while i'm at it then we'll get <laughs> the same color like that and then we'll want a bit of shade in there as well it'll be quite dark underneath there like that so i'm going to have to put an extra bit of when it's dry i'll put some extra shadow stuff in there and then i'll put that out so I'm not really sure about her eyes here at the moment. Quite, quite how I get to do that in colour. Maybe I've got to work at that. Um, I think we can have some more. Ah, just put my hand all over it, and I've just gone over the edge there as well. So I'm just going to add a bit of uh, water and try to dab that out while I can. I'll just try and dab that away while I can too. Not paying attention. Now this is flesh here, so we need to put that in there. It's a bit, bit yellow, isn't it? Oh, I've still got a bit of her yellow in there, I think. So there, that's a bit better. Um, we want some bright yellow around there, and then some grey. And I haven't actually decided what this should be. I think it should be something. Let's do that yellow and blue little hashtag thing we've got blue in there as well um, hum, um i'll just put that in there like that so he's pretty much done um and then we're going to do the same with her jacket too and hopefully the similar kind of colors because i'm getting a whole lot of splashing coming over here which is very unprofessional so i'll do this section first i think like that. A sleeve section like that, and then we want a bit more, a bit more down there and there as well. I think probably like that. Add a bit more shade in here where he's shading her there, and then oops, so we're going to want that to be yellow. It's okay, don't worry, it'll all work out because you don't want the same yellow all the way. You want a little bit of graduation in the yellow to give it a feeling of form and curvature uh, let's put make that quite dark in there then and do this panel down here oh that goes over the button and I haven't done the the ribbing on her bottom ribbing part I'm drawn that in so I'll do that in a moment let's get more blue a bit more like that yeah and also kind of down underneath there and she can have a kind of punky kind of skirt on underneath there so i'll just put this this ribbing in here and again i'm slightly altering the the the, the curve of the flick to give it the shape of the whole thing and i think maybe i'm when i come to do this 
again see I'm not sure about the eyes for one thing I think when I come to do this again I'm going to do I'm going to use a traditional paintbrush I think because this is I love using <laughs> Pentel this is Pentel Aquash brush I love using them but it's kind of uh, it's it, it's just a bit blocky for this kind of thing and it had to be kind of quite precise and there's some little bits like around the eyes I just can't quite get that right but <laughs> I think when, when I finish this I'm actually going to look on Amazon for how much those magnifying glass things are because my eyes have changed so much in the last two or three years probably from staring at screens and, and I think a uh, a uh, cheap sort of thing. In fact, I have this little, little thing here, which is all text. Um, I have this little thing here, which is a, a print magnifying glass for you to kind of, when I worked in printing like some 30, 40 years ago, the, the reps would come around and they would give these as special gifts. You can see then it's perfectly focused. Well, you can't. <laughs> it is. Anyway, so it's perfectly focused that when you look down you can sort of see the print magnified and the quality of the print and I find myself digging this out more and more just to check things and maybe if I had one of those big magnifying glass things that would uh, make things a little bit easier maybe so I'm just going to bring a bit of shade in there and maybe a bit more so now this is wet on dry so it, so this kind of leaves brush marks which it didn't do before and, and sometimes that's good and sometimes that's not so good but I can kind of get these kind of seam marks in there I think with brush in fact that seam looks like it ought to be a bit darker as well just to make it uh, stand out a bit more but not stand out but make it a bit more obvious and I think we need a bit more shade underneath and like that and we need a bit of shade around there too um, we're going to need a bit of yellow in there and a little bit of grey oh we can't see her badge on this anyway never mind <laughs> I'll have to get that right next time. So I'm I'm just going to call that it for a moment. I'm going to scan that and see what happens. I've scanned these two and brought them into Photoshop and I've tidied them up a bit. I kind of scanned them a little bit red for some reason. So I've got rid of that and I've cut out all the white behind. So I'm not going to uh, copy all of that. And then I'm going to come over to drop them in there. And I think we're going to want that to be and put a new layer in there and I'm going to want to have a gradient in the background for the moment so this is just kind of working out ideas really at the moment so you want a really dark blue and this dark midnight blue and over here we're gonna yeah let's do this in a rice sort of real cream okay down to there maybe bring that to about there and let's see what we get it's just too obvious at the moment I think um, and I'm also thinking then that I'll bring in a, a moon so part of this is just to see how it works really uh, let's go kind of creamy moon kind of color we want a paint bucket tool that's kind of behind them and then if we did let's bring that up there like that um, so if I brought that in a bit smaller behind them, maybe it should be right behind them as a sort of green. Maybe it should be something that big. Although that now kind of looks too, <laughs> too pointy. So if I bring that down a bit like that. Um, so it's a slightly shallower curve. So it's not a proper circle. If I did something like that, and then we come up here, Generation Moon. I feel that we should have the badge in there, like it would be a publisher's 
Like sometimes you get the publisher will put their little mark in up there, or maybe it should be down here actually, then bring it onto the top there. Or down here maybe. This is just something you have to go through with a, a cover, it's just to kind of <laughs> get the, the printers will say bring, make sure the text is within a certain area. Uh, right, now let's make this bigger. Let's do that on a different layer so that we can get it nice and big like that. And then I'm thinking whether we can have them more sort of bursting out of the side, out of the top. Make the moon a bit bigger like that. You see, you can play with this an awful lot. Uh, we can do that. Uh, we multiply that. It'll take the white out from there. So alternatively, we can have that down there. It's not quite so imposing. And they're sticking out from above it. That can be the slightly bigger. OK, I'm going to leave it like that just to kind of get the feeling of it. I'll maybe print it out. I know it's not right, so I'm printing it out now so I can just have a look. And you, you have to start somewhere, and this is kind of the first <laughs> start at cover design. And I'll keep working as it. I think they need to be much more detailed. They're just too cartoony at the moment. Well, thanks for watching, and make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rain and Droid channel. I keep coming back for lots more about this project generation moon there's quite a long way to go and a lot to do there's illustrations there's final editing or putting it all together in in design there's the whole kickstarter thing as well so i've, I've worked out quite a few of the rewards but um but the whole kickstarter page needs designing and then the marketing and all sorts of stuff like that so uh, if you wanted to follow this make sure you are subscribed to the shoe rain and join channel and keep coming back for lots more uh, videos all about this in the meantime Keep drawing, 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 and following, 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 and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.